Welcome to section 2 of viruses. This is our virus overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing varicella zoster virus, or VZV, which you can see right here. This scene will take place inside of a zoo. Notice the animals on the prominent sign that says, Welcome to the zoo. Zoo sounds like zoster, which should help you remember that this image is all about VZV. Did you notice the color schematic of the background? That's right, we've made this guy blue to help you remember that this is a DNA virus. Now look at the antlers of those two animals fighting each other. If we zoom up, you can see that they're lined up right next to each other in a somewhat parallel fashion. And this should help you remember that VZV is double-stranded. Now you can see that we've added a line of people leaving the zoo. I guess the zoo is beginning to close, so these people are forming a line as they exit the area. The line of people should help you remember that VZV is linear. Next, notice that we've shown some fog entering the zoo. This fog, or mist, should help you remember that VZV is transmitted through respiratory secretions. To add to this zoo theme, notice that we've shown some chickens next to the tree. The chickens are here to help you remember that VZV causes chicken pox, which is a pruritic vesicular rash. The fact that the chickens are right next to the tree trunk should help you remember that the rash starts on the trunk. This is an image of a child with chicken pox. As you can see, he has many erythematous spots on his trunk. Many of the vesicles appear to have popped, leaving behind crusted papules. Now notice that we've added a kid who appears to be tripping over this root. If you look at his backpack and the toy figure in his hand, you can see that he kind of has an obsession with the Greek god Zeus. Just like in the last video, this Zeus character is here to help you remember that a zank smear will reveal multinucleated giant cells. Again, this is an image of a zank smear showing multinucleated giant cells, which we showed in the last video. The fact that the kid is tripping over the tree root should help you remember the dorsal root ganglia. So, after an infection, the virus remains latent in the dorsal root ganglia. It can also remain latent in the trigeminal ganglion. To help you remember this, we've shown three gems on Zeus's belt. So, trigem for trigeminal ganglion. Alright, now let's turn our attention to the left side of the image, where we can see a clever monkey that has escaped. Now he's taunting the visitors and throwing shingles at everyone. Maybe this is why the zoo closed early, and now the line of people are leaving the zoo. In any case, the monkey throwing shingles should help you remember that VZV can cause shingles. This is the reactivated form of the infection. So after the virus becomes latent in the trigeminal or dorsal root ganglia, it becomes reactivated during times of stress or immunosuppression, resulting in a dermatological condition known as shingles. Notice that the monkey has become quite aggressive and even threw a shingle at this poor woman. You can see that one of the shingles has made a clean cut right on her abdomen. This is here to help you remember that shingles presents as a painful rash within a dermatomal distribution. This makes sense, right? The virus was latent in the dorsal root ganglion or the trigeminal ganglion of a sensory nerve associated with a specific dermatomal distribution. Therefore, when the virus becomes reactivated, it causes symptoms along that nerve in a dermatomal distribution. This is an image of shingles. As you can see, this patient is presenting with an erythematous rash in a dermatomal distribution across the lower back. You can see it best right here. Now the monkey has gone too far. Look at this poor guy who just got hit in the eye with a shingle. Ouch. This poor guy is here to help you remember that VZV can cause herpes zoster ophthalmicus. This is a form of shingles that affects the face and eye when the latent virus within the trigeminal ganglia reactivates and involves the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve. So shingle hitting the eye for herpes zoster ophthalmicus. This is an image of a patient with herpes zoster ophthalmicus. As you can see, he has a rash on his forehead and eye, which corresponds to the distribution of the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve. This is a potentially sight-threatening condition, so should be treated urgently. Another common complication of shingles is postherpetic neuralgia. To help you remember this, we've shown another poor guy who appears to have been hit in the foot and is in pain now. Unlike the other two people who are actively being hit with shingles, this guy was hit and is now in pain as you can see by him holding his foot and jumping up and down. In other words, it was a past event, and he is now experiencing the pain several seconds later. Just like postherpetic neuralgia is characterized by neuropathic pain that persists after the onset of the rash. So, guy who was hit in the foot and now in pain for postherpetic neuralgia. All right, now let's turn our attention to this girl watching the animals fight. You can see that all of this activity has kicked up a bunch of dirt, causing the girl to cough. This is to help you remember that VZV can cause pneumonia. This girl's parents are nearby and the mother is particularly hot in this summer weather. You can see that she's fanning herself and her husband is pouring water on top of her head in an attempt to cool her off. Just like in our other videos, the water all over her head should help you remember that VZV can also cause encephalitis. Now you can see that we've added a line of torches near the exit, which is to help you remember that VZV is a torches infection. To reinforce this idea, we've also shown a pregnant woman and a little boy near the torches to represent some of the manifestations of congenital VZV. Let's zoom up on them so you can see this better. As you can see, this boy has a very prominent scar on his cheek, 
which is to help you remember that congenital VZV can cause dermatomal scarring. He's also wearing some sunglasses, which is to help you remember that it can cause blindness. Finally, he's holding his favorite stuffed bear animal, but notice that this bear doesn't have any arms or legs. This is to help you remember that congenital VZV can cause limb hypoplasia. All right, if we zoom back out, you can see that we've added a live animal sign to the image. After all, this is a zoo with a lot of live animals. In any case, the live sign, that's also shaped kind of like a syringe, should help you remember that there is a live vaccine for VZV. Now we've shown a mother and a child under this pavilion. If we zoom up, you can see that the mother is giving this diabetic child a shot of insulin and is about to place a band-aid on him. Also notice that they're sitting under the pavilion that says max occupancy 200. The Band-Aid is a symbol for AIDS, or HIV. The syringe represents the vaccine, and the Max Occupancy 200 sign represents a CD4 positive count of 200. So putting these ideas together should help you remember that the vaccine may be given to HIV patients when the CD4 count is greater than 200. If the CD4 count is less than 200, then the vaccine should be avoided because a live vaccine in an immunocompromised patient can potentially cause disease and be more harmful than helpful. If we zoom back out, you can see that we've also shown an old man under the pavilion. This is to help you remember that the vaccine is recommended for individuals over 60 years old. All right, now let's talk about treatment. Notice that we've shown a little cyclone near the entrance. The cyclone is our symbol for acyclovir, which should help you remember that one of the treatments for VZV is acyclovir. We've also shown a violet cyclone, which should help you remember that VZV can also be treated with valacyclovir. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 28-year-old male comes to the office due to a rash that he first noticed yesterday. Physical examination reveals a vesicular rash in a dermatomal distribution on the patient's trunk. A viral infection is suspected. Which of the following is an appropriate recommendation for this patient's condition? A. Gancyclovir. B. Avoid contact with pregnant women. C. Supportive care. Or D. Prednisone. Okay, hopefully from the question sum, you notice that this patient had a vesicular rash in a dermatomal distribution. This is a classic description of shingles and should have been a dead giveaway, especially once the question stem stated that a viral infection was suspected. So an appropriate recommendation for shingles would be B, avoid contact with pregnant women. From the image, recall that VZV can be particularly devastating for pregnant women by affecting the fetus and causing congenital varicella. We've represented these ideas in the image with the pregnant woman and the boy right here. Because of these devastating effects, patients who have an active varicella infection should avoid contact with pregnant women. A is incorrect because this is the treatment for cytomegalovirus, or CMV, not VZV. C is incorrect because supportive care would not be advised as this patient is presenting early in the course of the infection. If you present it after 72 hours, then the benefit of antiviral therapy would be minimal, but this is not the case. Regardless, this idea is likely beyond the scope of step one, so you should just know that patients with shingles should generally be treated with acyclovir or valacyclovir. So C is incorrect. Finally, D is incorrect because glucocorticoids have shown no clinical benefit in patients with shingles, so prednisone would not be recommended. So again, the correct answer is B, avoid contact with pregnant women. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know regarding VZV.